Well, hello, my name is Julie and I am on a very dirty, low carb uh, journey adventure and I'm still sitting here in the car. My daughter is in a doctor's appointment. So while I'm sitting here uh, having a snack, I thought this is a great opportunity to one, do my keto journal and two, finally review a product that I've been meaning to review for quite some time. And this is the last one that I have on hand. If I'm not gonna do it now, when am I gonna do it? Let's do it right now. This is the Atkins Cafe Caramel uh, Shake. It's a protein-rich shake. It has three grams of net carbs, and it is delicious. Now, I have to um, kind of qualify that and tell you that, yeah, it's it's a coffee drink. It even says... Um, where does it say it? I know it says it on here somewhere that it that it does actually have caffeine in it and and real coffee. So <clears throat> maybe it was on the on the package that it said it. But anyway, but it did. And so I've been careful that if I've already had a whole bunch of actual coffee, I don't usually drink these for one of my meals that day because I don't want to overdo it on the caffeine. So yes, this is a great one for a pick me up. But if you are not into coffee, which how are you living? But that's, <laughs> if you are not into coffee, then the cafe caramel is definitely not for you because it is absolutely a coffee drink. So, uh, the, the flavor experience now I've already had some, but, but I've got to finish this anyway, and we might as well give you, uh, the real experience, right? Right. So immediately you taste the caramel and guys, it tastes like real caramel. Ah, uh, and not like um fake sugar caramel, you know, like you get in so many other low carb products. It tastes like real caramel. And then the second flavor that hits kind of immediately after that is the bitterness of the coffee. They, it's smooth. It's rich. It's creamy. It doesn't taste like you're having, well, a low carb food. No, it tastes like no, not exactly. Okay, let's let's be honest. But if you've been on if you've been on um, keto or or Atkins or a low carb adventure for a long time, you get pretty generous with um, kind of your descriptions of how yummy things are because you've been kind of deprived in, in, in a way deprived as far as in the sweets department for some time, and so you you have a greater, quicker appreciation of good sweets than most people will. So when I compare it to like an iced coffee from Starbucks or McDonald's, I think I'm being pretty accurate because actually my daughter brought home an iced coffee from McDonald's just the other day. And I would say this is a pretty fair comparison. Pretty darn fair. Uh, you absolutely have got to drink this ice cold. Same with any Atkins or low carb or meal replacement of whatever variety shakes, they must be ice cold. So you are, you're getting an iced coffee experience. Now, for myself, I am not an iced coffee person. My daughter, yes, me. I want that coffee piping hot and full of creamy goodness. That's how I like my coffee. So I was really honestly pretty surprised, pretty shocked that I enjoyed it thoroughly, where it is a coffee drink, but it's also cold. That was a surprise to me, a very pleasant, very happy surprise, and I'm gonna I'm gonna recommend it. Yeah, just smooth. Um, I would absolutely recommend shaking it up. Any of these drinks, shake them up before before you drink them. I think it even says that on there. But mm, ice cold and shake them up. And and in fact, that time I I got both flavors a little more together, which was which was really great. And it's, you know, because I'm so animated and moving around, and so <laughs> it was shaking them up. I got my own little centrifuge right here. Um, but anyway, uh, it did actually just make the flavors just that teeny bit better and a little more balanced because you had yes the bitterness, but it was being balanced simultaneously with the caramel. So definitely shake it up, even if you need to do that little you know swirly swirl before every sip, I would recommend doing that because that does make it just that little bit more enjoyable. Uh, this I got at Walmart. They're like $7 for a four pack, something like that. So when it comes to low carb stuff, it's, it is, I mean, it's not the best deal ever, but it's a pretty good deal. Unfortunately, I have only been able to find them available in four packs. So not the very best value, and I am the frugal mama, so you know I want the very best value, which can be tricky when you are doing the low-carb life, because 
it is a very expensive lifestyle to, to try to stick to. Uh, and where with some of my other shakes, you can get them in like the, the 8, 10, and 12 packs. And so the price, you know, you're paying more up front, but it is definitely a better value buying in those bulk boxes, a you know, better price per shake. They don't have it with this one. You're limited in, in which flavors you can get in those bulk options. So I would say for a special treat, for a fun adventure, if you love caramel, if you love iced coffee, and if you're okay with coffee, period, highly recommend that. All right. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Um, on to my journal. Okay. How are we doing? Well, for starters, how are you? Hi. Um, it has been rough. I've been sticking to my dirty keto, dirty low carb plan, and I've been doing a great job of that. I have not been getting exercise. Uh, I have been in horrendous pain, uh, like myofascial uh, trigger point pain that I know a lot of you are, are familiar with and deal with on a regular basis, but that deep tissue pain, it has been pretty overwhelming. Uh, I'm in physical therapy again, and when I get back from Disney World, I will be getting cortisone shots again. Probably bring you along for that. That'll be fun. And also trigger point shots, just injections. Uh, if that's not something you're up to watching, just let me know. But I, I know there are some people who will want to see it. Um, yeah, so lots and lots of stretching and yoga and using the foam roller and the massage gun and dry needling and the tennis ball and just doing everything I can to make movement <laughs> more bearable and more enjoyable because, ouch, I have been in so much pain. Part of it is the cold that absolutely stiffens things up and, and makes it painful. Uh, it's also been stress. So I've talked about just a little bit here and there that one of my children is sick. And this is... Um, a very serious condition, but one that, and one that she could absolutely die from, but not one that we'd have, I mean, we'd maybe have warning. It, it's tricky without um, invading uh, her privacy too much and sh oversharing, which you have to be very careful with doing as a YouTuber, uh, because a lot of you are, my, I mean, you know, my good YouTube friends and, and all of that. But, um, but this also goes out to the, you know, the, the whole wide world, potentially. Even little things like this on my little tiny channel. Yes, it can. And that would violate my daughter's privacy and my family's privacy as well. And so I, I really can't go too much into the details of her medical condition. But just suffice to say, it is very serious. Uh, and it could kill her. And what we have been doing so far has not been enough. Um, we have weekly doctor visits that we have to do. We have a whole slew of medications and treatments and so much <laughs> that we are doing uh, to, to improve her situation and, you know, get her to adulthood and all of that. But it is incredibly stressful. It is 24 hours a day, seven days a week of monitoring things. And it's very, very hard. Uh, you know, there's no handbook. I know there's the what to expect when you're expecting and that nonsense, but there's no for real handbook on how to be a parent. Uh, and especially when it comes to conditions that you just didn't anticipate, uh, things you absolutely did not expect, you know? Oh, I think the animal animal control is coming. Yep. There is a there's this beautiful dog that's running around here in the parking lot dragging his leash, poor thing. So he's somebody's fur baby. Yep, there's the animal control. Um I I took pictures and posted about it on on Facebook the in the local area cuz I know it's someone's baby, someone's fur baby, but he happened to be hanging out by it. Sorry, we're squirreling here. Hanging out by um the COVID-19 testing center out here. And so the, the sweet nurses there, they obviously called. And so he's getting picked up. But anyway, um, <clears throat> ah, he'll be okay. 
he'll be all right. I'm sure he's probably got tags and everything because, I mean, he had, he was dragging his leash. He got away from somebody. <laughs> anyway, sorry, side note, I'm concerned. Um, anyway, so all of this has been going on with my daughter and we're just working on trying to do the best we can as parents. She, you know, my kids, my babies, they're my heart and my soul. And you're not prepared. You're just not prepared for this. That's all. You're not prepared for these kinds of conditions and situations. And uh, I've talked a little in the past that I had a very rough go of having kids in the first place. I have had 10 miscarriages, uh, no longer have any baby making machinery in this old body because I would get pregnant on any and every birth control. And even after I got my tubes tied, I still had a miscarriage. Yeah, I would get pregnant, however that happened, but they wouldn't carry for many reasons. And anyway, uh, that was just, you know, the way that this circus of a body happened to be. And so <clears throat> it's been a very rough road building a family. And now <sighs> an almost equally rough road keeping my family going, um, Gratefully, you know, we, we've had a lot better situations than I know so many other parents have gone through. Many of you know that my niece, who had lifelong um, horrible health conditions and severely disabled, uh, passed away last year. And there's no perfect parent situation, okay? We we choose to bring these these children into the world, into our families, and it falls on us to give 100% to whatever situation arises. And that's that's our duty and our privilege. And I'm grateful that I'm the one, along with my husband and, and my kids and my family, that that gets to to be the mom here, you know, and be the be the, the support system here. But at the same time, I'm human. I'm a real life human being with um mental health struggles, with my own physical um health struggles galore. And it is trying. It is so trying. It is so difficult. And sometimes you have to just give yourself permission to say, this is hard. This is so fucking hard. I would give anything and everything of myself to take this off of my child. But that's not possible. And so what I have to do is be the best mom that I can be for her. And that includes self-care and, and taking care of me and my mental health and my physical health so that I can provide for her and my other children and my husband and, and all of my, you know, responsibilities in my life. So grateful that in less than a week, I will be at Disney. Oh my God, I'm so grateful. I'll be there with my sister just, oh, I'm so ready. I'm so ready for a little break. But at the same time, I'm dealing with all the guilt and the stress and the worry and afraid that while I'm gone, even though my husband will be home the whole time and be with my kids 24-7 and he will do a fantastic job, I know that it's going to be tough while I'm gone. I know it won't be 100% just relaxing and refreshing and recharge because I will be worrying about my baby the whole time I'm gone. I know that. <sighs> also, when I get back, there is something else that we are looking into in another state where we will be able to get more help, more expertise, um, and treatments for my child. And so we will be traveling uh, as a family when I get back from Disney World shortly thereafter. Um, this will be an opportunity, like I said, for more expertise and more help for my, my child. Uh, but also at the same time, a respite for my family, which may come off sounding horrible unless you've been in a situation like this, you need a break. The whole family needs a break from the stress. Um, my child who's going through all this needs a break from my constant hovering and smothering, even though it's necessary 
covering and smothering. Um, it gets old. It gets old for any kid. It gets old for any parent. And we need a break. And we need more expertise, more help. And so the plan is we're still working out logistics and finances. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm so grateful for the insurance that I, you know, our family has. We're so lucky that way, just straight up lucky, especially here in these United States. But um, that's what we're looking into. Not It's not 100% set in stone yet, but that is something that uh, we're working on setting up for after I get back. And it's just, you know, next level care. It's short term. This is not a long term thing. We're looking at one to two weeks to hopefully improve the situation and get on top of it and, um, you know, figure some more things out that maybe we're not aware of yet. Other treatments, other alternatives and, and whatever, um, but also for a breather. It'll, it'll be a, a win-win kind of a thing. And yet at the same, like it, it accomplishes two things, you know, getting more help for my child, but also a breather for my family and for my child. But at the same time, same as my going to Disney World, you know, the whole time I'm going to be like, okay, what's going on now? What's going on? What's going on? What are they doing? What? <laughs> Does she need me? <sighs> Are they taking good care of her? Mm. This really is yummy. But yeah, you want it cold. Don't let it get warmed up. Oh my God. <clears throat> Being a parent, you guys. Jeez. It's expensive. Not just financially, but physically, mentally, emotionally. All of that. It's worth it to me. I don't know that it'd be worth it for everyone. Not everyone is meant to be a parent. That's for sure. But God damn, I love my kids. Doing my best to be positive and optimistic and to um, present positive energy for the family, which is why it's so helpful to have this, this little space where I can come and, and let let this out and say what I need to say <sighs> and vent. So helpful. Oh, it's so helpful. So thank you for listening and watching and being part of this because it means the world to me. <sighs> the amazing thing, to end on a positive note, is I have not fallen back into the eating disorder, which is almost unbelievable because normally for the last what, 23 years, that's been my go-to. Anytime there's stress, struggle, whatever, that's where I've gone. Not this time. No. Have I gotten as much exercise as I should have? Has my nutrition been as stellar as it could be? No. <laughs> no. No. Definitely no. But I've stayed the course. I've stayed on my dirty low carb. I haven't gone to uh, binging and purging. Haven't done any of those things. The thoughts have come. Oh my God, they have come. That voice has come knocking on the door. Hey, I've got, I've got the answer. I'm, I'm going to make you feel all better. I'm going to take care of you. Remember me? Your old problem solver? And I've shut it out. I wouldn't have believed even two, three years ago, that it was possible to shut that voice up. I would not have believed that was possible. But I came to a point in my life, and I'm on good medication too, let's not forget that, <laughs> where I started fighting back. And that, that has made a difference. I, I have empowered myself against that mental disorder and that horrible, hateful voice. And I'm going to keep fighting back because my kids, my husband, all of my family, they need me and I need me. 
and I've got to be the best version of myself for them and for me and this one little life that I get to live. Thank you for being part of it. I hope you are well. I hope you are warm. I know things are crazy all over right now. So grateful to have this little space where we can come for a few minutes and just unwind and think about something else, you know? Anyway, sending you my love, my best wishes, and I'll see you real soon.